Say, God bless.
and it's so easy to get upset, and it's so easy to be angry, and it's so easy to do things that is not justified. Amen? Amen. And sometimes we get to the point where we put our lives are so filled with injustice that it becomes to a it gets to a breaking point in our life. Where we can actually snap. But I, what I want to do is, I don't want to just go by how I feel in my own emotions, but I want to go by the word of God. The word of God says. Because what I feel is this it disregards it, it doesn't line up with the word. So in our breaking point, we can do things that are not right. Just as much as Jesus in his and his and in his walk for three years as, as um, taking that the title of the Son of God, let people know who he was. I mean, I'm quite sure that there were so many breaking points that wasn't even written in the scripture. But I can tell you the one breaking point that he had, and that breaking point when he goes up to the temple. And he's trying to worship God. And he wants to give praise to our Father. And he's setting the example of how we should live. And as he's coming up to the temple, this is during the feast, he sees money exchange. He sees things that are not supposed to be done. And he knows that the people that are running this temple know that what they're doing is wrong and nobody's doing anything about it. So what does he do? He turns the table over, all the money on the floor, or on the, on, on the ground. He takes a whip, and he takes care of all those people that were selling pigeons with one eye, selling ox, or goats and sheep that was the form and prepping. See, when you give to God, you give God your, your very best. You don't settle and say, oh, you know what, I got a couple of dollars, let me get that, 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 that dove, yeah. even though the dove can't fly, and I'm going to just give this to God. Yeah. It doesn't work that way. So, and, and my God, and my, my Savior's point of view, or in his mind, he's thinking, this ain't happening, not to that. This ain't going to go down like this. So he had to make a stand. It's not that he did anything wrong, but his anger allowed him to let people know that he had a voice and he was standing up for the injustice. It wasn't the injustice of the rich, it was the injustice of the people, the poor, poverty stricken people that couldn't afford to get into the temple. Amen. Follow me? Amen. Amen. So, this is going to be preaching and teaching. So, again, I understand how people can be upset. Um, I also want to realize that the whole Trayvon Martin case is that my son looks like Trayvon Martin. Your son looks like Trayvon Martin. Amen? Amen. So can, I, can I put you on board for me? Can I put you on board? They took a dead person and tried to find out if he was doing drugs. 
They went in this past just to justify what they were doing. Now, I'm not trying to make this a black and white issue. I'm trying to make it a justice, a justice issue, an injustice issue. So I just want you to realize what it looks like. Because the media says one thing, and then we say another. But we may follow suit to what the media says. Amen? So I just want you to realize what it looks like. <laughs> but as a Christian, what should we do? As a follower of Christ, what should we do? We should pray. We should pray. We should. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 6 says, Be angry. Sin not. Because there's so many so called Christians out there that are doing things that are not that they're not supposed to. I understand taking action, but in our action with our anger relies on being justified. And I'll give you a fine example. Rodney King, everybody knows Rodney King. Four cops beat him down. All over America, there were all these race riots. Or riots, I should say. But everybody remember Reginald Denny? What did he get beat up for? He had nothing to do with that situation. But somebody got angry and took it out on him. And that's why the word of God says, be angry, but sin not. And when I, I, I look at the whole situation, I kind of feel bad for George Zimmerman. The reason why I say that is because, to me, it's like he's got the mark of king. Because get him up. Me and my wife were talking about this yesterday. What can he actually do? Does he go back to work? You know, and he fears his own life, and he's in hiding. But these are the things that he didn't think of when it happened. Am I saying that Trayvon Martin was, was, was uh, innocent? I'm not saying that. I was 17 years old. I know what I did when I was 17. I remember what I used to do to the cops when I was 17. I talked back, I talked all kind of men. But my maturity wasn't mature. Yeah, that's right. You know what I'm saying? So. I, I have to put things in perspective. So when I go to work and everybody got their own opinion and their own feelings, you know, they don't realize that they used to be 17 at one time. And as a black kid in the inner city, we sometimes, or more times than many, we end up raising hell. Not to say that it's just that it's just right that we should die or get murdered. But I understand. So the Bible says, be angry, sit down. But I do a lot of reading, I do a lot of research, and I do a lot of study. And I know in the 60s, in the 50s, and even in the 40s, earlier than that, they had this thing called the Jim Crow Law. And I'm quite sure the pastor will tell you all the about it, but I'll be here all night. Now, to me, Jim Crow hasn't been going anywhere. As a matter of fact, I believe that it's, it's called the new Jim Crow with a modern day twist. Because the way I look at it is that Trayvon Martin was the modern day lynching. And we could say, oh, you're using these words too harsh, but it is what it is. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna like sugarcoat anything because I really don't have anything to do. I'm not running for office. So, soon. Amen? Amen. Amen? So, in this new Jim Crow era, we have felons that come out, that can't vote, that don't have a voice, so they become second class citizens. We have privatized uh, prisons, yeah. that where the government makes money per person, and it's like 85, 87 cents, 87 dollars per day. That's like 12 grand per year, or per person. You know, so it's all a money scheme. So this new Jim Crow will allow the city of New York to stop racial profiling because the commissioner and the, and the, the man shook hands on it. So now they're picking, picking pockets for anybody they want to do. So anybody know about Trayvon Martin? But does anybody know about Oscar Grant? 
anybody know about Sean Bell? Does anybody know about get my words right now? Thank you. 
tell you the truth, you do not believe it. So it's, it's not so much as actually killing somebody, but people out there that sell drugs to other people, that are doing things that, that uh, disintegrate their character, or when you say things that might make somebody spiritually suicidal, that doesn't want to believe, that doesn't want anything to do with God because of the words that we say, the hatred that we have, we become murderers. And that's the father of a flies from the other person, which we call the devil. So again, if we're made in the image of our father who's in heaven, we have to do the things that he made us to do. All, the, all our talent and all our, our gifts we use the benefit of his people to give him glory. And if you're not doing that, then you're selling yourself short and you're up for adoption. And there's another father that's waiting for you to come into his kingdom. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you, Lord God, that you allowed me to, I guess,